Welcome back. So we're gonna do a little bit more trick training. Um, that's what I mentioned about doing last video. And I wanna kinda of progress through some of his more complicated tricks and how I got him to do them. He's pretty pooped. He's had a long stretch of exercise this week. Um, this weekend, we had some guests that he really enjoys and they did a lot of beach time. And he's been getting pretty much one good session a day at least like one intense session on top of his walks and on top of the normal stuff we do just kind of ramped it up because we got like i mentioned in that last video that new duck bumper i believe it's somewhere around here um and that's really motivated him he's kind of like a kid in that respect uh something that i noticed early on with this dog um it could just be this individual it could be the breed is that because they're so smart or he's so smart at least he likes and gets excited for new stuff. So if, even if it's just a variation of a toy he's already played with, it's a new style bumper, a new style frisbee, a new style ball. If it's something that he hasn't really ever played with out and about, he gets super, super excited and he works really hard for it. So he's been going really hard for that new duck bumper. It's something that he really, excuse me, he really enjoys. Um, and he's been swimming probably double the amount that he normally would and because the duck, the duck bumper is rubber and it flies a lot further than most bumpers we've had, he's been swimming further and further every time as well. So it's really pooped him out. He's, he's just been sleeping. We also had a big day. We went to the park and then came home, rehydrated him and then went out shopping. And he just, he likes to guard our car. So he makes sure that everything's legit and gets to bark at people that are walking by if they get too close. Some people really like to try to antagonize them too, which I don't really understand. They'll just sit there and either bark back at them or try to talk to them through the windows and he just goes off. But hey, everybody's different. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of training. I also got something new. Um, he knows how to jump over and under uh, my legs. This is something I taught him as a puppy, but we recently just got him a hula hoop yeah, nice, right? Multicolor. You can actually, it breaks apart and you can make it bigger or smaller, but for our purposes, we made it the smallest setting because we don't really need all the extra space. Um, he can fit through, no problem. But he's a little spooked by it still. He doesn't really understand exactly what it's for. Uh, he might bark at it when we try, but he will go through. He's done it, I've done it with him twice now, successfully and two times unsuccessfully where you just didn't want to go through and he was kind of suspicious so uh, you know a lot of this training is just acclimating them to a process that you want them to do it's getting them used to you know the command that you're trying to perform or the command that you're trying to associate with the action you want them to perform and uh, that's just part of every kind of process every kind of trick some of them come really natural to the individual dog some of them come really easy to the breed uh, some of them don't and you just got to work with them until they get comfortable enough to do what you're trying to get them to do and they understand that that's what you're actually trying to get them to do so we're gonna just uh i got more of those wild bits he loves these things like we'll do just about anything for him so we're gonna run through um a few different training tricks that we do yes, let's get to it so the tricks we're gonna go over today um I'm gonna make him lay down, and I call it bang. Some people call it play dead. Whatever, you know, like I said, it's all about the natural language you use with the dog so the tones are consistent. Uh, I'm gonna do that one. I taught him, a lot of people like to see the twirly, like the, where they go in a circle, left or right. I called it clockwise and counter, um, so that he knows, not that he knows, but so it's just kind of funny. It's like almost like a little parlor trick when we're out and about, I'll tell him, clockwise and he'll turn clockwise and people look at me like what the hell is this dog doing so it's kind of a you know like i said it's just like a fun little parlor trick he doesn't really know what that means he just knows which way to turn when we're talking about that so I'll, we'll do those um i'll i'll do the play dead trick i'll i'll show to um i taught him basically i call it spot up or and then i don't even have a, a name for the for one of the commands, it's a variation of it. I just tap my thighs with my legs slightly spread and he comes in between them and sits down. It's kind of like a guard position. Um, I thought it was a really good idea to teach him something like that so he can kind of rein in. Uh, any kind of recall that you can teach them is good. Any kind of 
excuse me, any kind of command that you can teach them to make sure that their recall is on point and to make sure that they're coming back to you and have multiple variations so it's fun and, you know, makes them think is always a good thing in my opinion. I'm not a dog trainer. I'm not a professional dog trainer. I'm not anything like that. I have my opinions um, and I have my anecdotal evidence. I have what's worked for me and that's what I'm going to speak on and you know, it, 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 so far Pharaoh's adhered very well. I haven't had a problem with him. And uh, so let's get to it. We'll go through some of his tricks. Um, I'm gonna try to get him to jump through the hoop for you guys and see if he'll actually behave and do it this time. But he's a little burnt out, he's a little tired. I'm, you can probably see him right there on the floor. Sleeping, cooling off. He was on his bed for most of the day, but it's start, the sun's coming down through our window now, so it's starting to heat up the house a little bit. Um, and I closed the window for recording purposes so we don't get a lot of background noise, but he likes to sleep on our, I think it's laminate, could be hardwood, uh, to cool off. It's kind of nice for him, but he's pretty done for the day. But as soon as I open up this bag of treats, he'll get pretty excited. So here we go. Ah, yeah, see that? Bag's open, ears and head are up and attention. All right, Farrell. You ready? You wanna do some tricks? You're just gonna be lazy. All right. Let's in here. Ready, dude? Come on, up. Wait. All right, so first one's late. Lay down. work. All right. Good job. Good job. All right. Ready? Clockwise. Good boy. Good boy. All right. Wait. Ran out of treats. Let's get a few more. good one to teach them is I come in closer another good one to teach them I I call it touch some people call it target basically it's a command to come have them come over to your hand um, again another recall trick so any kind of different variation you can do on the recall to get them excited about coming back to you to get them enthused and to challenge their brain that's really where you want to that's really where you want to focus on so we're gonna do the uh, I'll show you spot up and then I'll show you the variation of spot up right now. Over here. Wait. Boy, ready? Spot up. Nice job, nice job. Alright, come on, back over here. Yeah. All right, wait, sit. Let me touch. Thank you. So I've taught him stand up and then I'm, he's supposed to wait for the command where I flip my hand over and that then he does that little spin. I call it twinkle toes, but he's really excited right now to be, be doing some tricks. Yeah, some tricks. So he's getting a little, uh, a little, a little impatient for the command. Um, but now we're gonna go ahead and try to do the uh, hula hoop. So a little bit of new training here is gonna be fun. And let's see if we can get him to do it while being calm. 
part of the part of the process is trying to get him used to it so that he's calm. Um, when we first got it, we were doing hula hoop ourselves, and he was trying to sniff it and kind of tagged him in the nose a little bit. Not hard or anything, but enough to kind of startle him. So he's a little wary of the hoop, but hey, you know that's life. All right, come through. Nice job, nice job, good boy. All right, ready? One more time, through. Oh, come on, come on. Wait, come on, through. Shit! All right, all right, sit down. Sit, good boy. It's like you just saw there, he did it once, he thought he was good, um, and then you saw him start to bark at it, and I made him sit down and I rewarded him for sitting. A big part of what I, my personal opinion, a big part of training these kind of smart dogs is not giving them into their frustration and redirecting them so if they do start to get frustrated we'll give them something easy to do that you can reward them with very fast that way it kind of refocuses them um i'm gonna see if i can get him to do it one more time he's kind of going over trying to grab different toys now he wants to play we got a ton of like stuffed animals and tug toys that he's all about and then we've got bully sticks see how he's standing up in that little bin there. Um, he's got bully sticks and all sorts of toys that he's trying to play. Yeah, there we go. So, let's try it again. Come on. We're not playing with that right now. Let's do this. Oh, I know. You wanna play with this? You wanna play with this? Oh, yeah. You wanna play with this? All right, ready? Come on. Good boy. Nice job, nice job. Okay, yeah, so ferocious. All right, come on, ready? Ready? Come on, come on. Wait, come on, come over here. Come on, through. <laughs> Sit down. Sit. Come on. Catch. Nice work. So something you saw there too, um, I got him to jump through the hoop for his toy. You don't always have to use treats if they really like a toy. It's a good thing to actually do, so you're not always dependent on having a treat. Um, if you're always dependent on having a treat, sometimes they won't listen if you don't have the treat. Their nose is really good, and they understand that that reward might not be coming for them. So they don't really have motivation to listen to you. Um, I always try to use different toys as well. All righty, sit down. Good boy, ready? Get. Oh, he's a good boy. Nice work. Nice work. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. That's a good boy. Want a treat too? All right, give me a touch. Thank you. But yeah, he's. That's what we do. Um, we do this quite a bit, most of the day. If I'm around, I try to do these sessions, you know, 10, 15 minutes at a time here and there, two to three times a day on top of walks, on top of the park. It's a very involved breed, but they're a lot of fun, especially if you enjoy this kind of stuff with your animal. Um, I think uh, next video we'll do, as you can see, when something he pulled down from there. We have treat boards, like they're puzzle boards for him. So I'll set up a mat and let him do the puzzles for you guys. He's a little rough with them. He just goes for it. Uh, you know, I don't really believe in making them do the puzzles a certain way. I let them figure it out on their own and if they can figure out a way that wasn't necessarily the way it was designed to be taken apart, but you can get them to do it, I think that's just as good of them being able to do it the way it was designed to. It's, you know, it's almost like figuring out the solution to a math problem a different way than your teacher taught it to you. It's not a bad thing. So that's Pharaoh. I'm Colin and uh, we'll check in soon.